Thanks for staying with us. We'll be starting the newspaper reviews with The Nation. Major headline, CBN steps up measures to strengthen Naira against dollar. Apex Bank sells Forex to BDCs at 1,101 to a dollar, using dollar as security for Naira loan band. Omobaya replaces Shaibu as Edo deputy governor. Twisting LP, PDP crisis. Protest at NLC Pali. Demagum should quit now. XTCN boss accuses agency of mismanaging $500 million. Ulubado. Obas give Ladoja wear the crown condition for truce. Jimo arms campaign team with APC membership register. Alleged 4.8 billion US dollars, 2.8 billion fraud. Emifili pleads not guilty. Tomorrow is Eid El Fetri. Sultan declares. Holidays remain today and tomorrow. What stories do we have in the nation? Okay, so I have the Eid El Fetri <coughs> story. So the hard copy did not carry it, but. I'm reading from the online copy now, and it's said in the nation that the federal government has declared Thursday, April 11, as an additional public holiday, so we get three holidays. And this was contained in a statement by the Palm Sec of the Ministry of Interior, Dr. Aishetu Ndayako, of, uh, on her Twitter handle. She said the federal government has approved Thursday, April 11, 2024, as an additional public holiday to ce celebrate the Eid of Victory. And she just left it there. But the hard copy then says, you know, based on the outcome, um, Saudi Arabia announced that they will continue fasting today. Um, the Sultan has declared tomorrow as um, Eid of Fitri, as the first of Shawwal, and will celebrate the Eid on um, tomorrow as well. Um, the federal government on Sunday had previously declared Tuesday and Wednesday um, as the public holidays, but because of the new development, Thursday is now added to the public holiday to properly cover for those of us fasting. So Eid al-Fitri, Eid mubarak to all of us. Okay, so I have the major headline here. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, yesterday announced two fresh strategies aimed at strengthening the Naira. Uh, one is the prohibition of the use of foreign currency as collateral for Naira loans. It seemed that a lot of people were getting loans but then using their dollar to show it up. The second is the slash in the amount it sells the dollar to license bureau de change operators. Uh, the many measures were contained in a separate circular by the acting director of the banking supervision department, Dr. Adetona Adedeji, and the director of trade and exchange department, Dr. W.J. Kanya. And um, in a circular by Kanya, it said the CBN sold uh, 15.88 million to 1,588 eligible uh, bureau de change uh, operators. The last intervention is stayed in one month. The circular also addressed the Association of Bureau de Change Operators of Nigeria, uh, APCON, President Aminu Gwadabi, and explained that they are selling the dollar 1,101 to them. The BDCs are now to sell the dollar 1,116 or 1.5% margin above the purchase rate. Uh, the previous dollar purchase rates for BDCs were $1,252. And according to Kanye, I say each of the eligible BDCs will now have access to 10,000 US dollars only. The circular reads, and I quote quickly, we write to inform you of the sale of 10,000 by the CBN to BDCs at the rate of 1,101 to a dollar. The BDCs are in turn to sell to eligible end users at a spread of not more than 1.5% above the purchase price. All eligible BDCs are therefore directed to commence payment of the Naira deposit to the underlisted CBN Naira deposit account numbers from today. That was uh, yesterday, April 8th and uh, submit confirmation of payments with other necessary documents for disbursement. All of this plan is to find a way to see how we can you know, boost our Naira. And you know, in some quarters, a lot of people are excited that the Naira is beginning to gain ground. Other qu quarters, especially people who are involved in you know, dollar businesses and racketeering, those ones are feeling low, like they're going to be losing money. But I just want it to be a win-win for our currency. And I exactly. Me, I'm, I, I'm happy that, I mean, it's happening. I wanted to talk about the new governor of Edo State. New, new deputy, deputy governor, governor, sorry, of Edo State. Um, his name is Godwin's Omobayo. He was sworn in yesterday. He's only 37. Um, the, state, uh, the House impeached Philip Shaibu yesterday. Mm. And in the, in the morning, Abby, and then in the afternoon, they swore <laughs> he in. He filled the vacuum. That was fast. Uh, <coughs> God filling the vacuum. Mm.
the swine um, mobile mobile uh, uh, philip shaibu has he did a video saying look this is injustice and it's not and um, he's going to fight it he's going to fight this injustice that he, he there is no crime that he committed his only crime that he committed was to have wanting an to be governor and under the constitution he has every right to, to be to aspire to be a governor but um godwin zomobai in an interview said he's very happy he's representing the um people of Ak Ak Edu, and they have never been they've been marginalized so he's very happy and he's uh, he's going to use this six months because they asked him at this well, it's only six months you have to say he's very happy with the six months uh, he's, at least he, he's in a cv mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he talked of his admiration for the new candidate for the pdbp igodalo but he's from labor party as yeah. in like but you know why we're exactly. talking about it uh, well, yeah, so let me just yeah. leave because we are talking about talking it about as a hot topic so the federal government has deployed <clears throat> something called this an, an app by Adizabala Husman. The aim of this app is to ensure that citizens can give, get, um, give feedback to the president. So the presidency gets uh, feedback from the citizens on how well each of the administration, any part of the administration is doing. The flag off of the app, Adizabala Husman, dropped the hints in Abuja yesterday said that there is a compulsory periodic quarterly assessment to rate performances in line with the identified priority areas. And this is part of um, the President Tinubu's administration's design to um, allow Citizen Delivery Tracker app. This, this is called Citizen Delivery Tracker app. It will monitor the performance of ministers and their portfolio. And Nigerians can use this platform to give feedback to the government on the policies, programs, and projects. The constituency projects allocated to the Senate, House of Representative members would also be assessed as well. Mm. So I'm looking forward to how this would work. I, I can't wait to download the app, mm. and I can't wait to put in my own, at least concerning power. Mm -hmm. And then I think everybody that keeps complaining about Senate and House of Rep constituency projects can then use this to say, I am in Whatever state, maybe I was in Akure, I can say I'm, I'm based in Akure. This is what the budget said, and this is what yeah, we are saying. Or we'll not, yes, it's just to check the KPIs. You took my Senator story. in charge of it. <laughs> However, there are, what, eight, um, there are eight, eight priority areas that the app would you know, help us monitor economy, education, health, energy, natural resources, infrastructure, education. Infrastructure is rude, Sabi. Yes. Mm. Mm. Among the way YK just put <laughs> <laughs> it like, should, should we finish the app? Should we app? Should we finish the app? Should we finish the app? So when they come and say we have done the have no other work, we put it today. We take a picture. Uh -huh. Yeah. Why will be the assistant uh, but the tree I will even go and lie down on the road. <laughs> Smart me. Let me put it on <laughs> Let's take a breather now. When we come back, the newspaper reviews continue. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're still reviewing the papers. Now to the punch. Major headline: Banks get three months deadline to stop forex-backed loans. Banks customers begin negotiation to liquidate loans on freeze dumb account balances. Naira rises to 1,220 to a dollar as CBN sells Forex to bury the change operators at 1,101 to a dollar. NMPCL faces three billion US dollars backlog on petrol payments report. Federal government may get one billion US dollars AFRIZIM bank loan in May. EFCC probes 50 accounts linked to humanitarian ministry. Obasaki swears in new deputy as Assembly sacks Shaibu. Sultan declares Wednesday El Defitri 70,500 security personnel deployed. Emefele returns to EFCC custody, faces fourth arraignment April 25th. Total solar eclipse hits Mexico, US, Canada. Did anybody see that eclipse? Saw, Someone sent me a video. It was beautiful. It was so beautiful. Mm. What stories do we have in the So front? I have the EFCC <coughs> the story. Go on. Go on and tell no, 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 no. Take it. Go on. We all have it. <laughs> I also so have it. The EFCC, according to the, um, their in-house magazine, are probing 50 accounts as they have recovered 30 billion in the alleged scandal against the former minister or the suspended minister for the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, uh, Ms. Beta Edu. 
and uh, um, AFCC chairman also use the opportunity to ask for special court so that the corrupt cases that they are prosecuting will go fast as fast as possible. They said that they are also probing her predecessor, uh, Sadia Omar Farouk, and you know um, the national coordinator for of the National Social Investment Program um, is also um, involved. Uh, that's Ms. Ali Mashil in this uh, present probe. Um, you know, it was suspended recently um, in January, but the ministry found that you know five it, 585 million was paid into the account of one Miss Oniyelu Bridget, who is um, supposed to be the project accountant for grants for vulnerable groups. Now, grant for vulnerable groups was supposed to dispense this amount of money in, to vulnerable groups in Akwaibom, Cross River, Ogun, and Lagos, and. This money was now paid into a private account. The lawyer to Better Edu was insisting that it is not abnormal, you know, to have such, it is legal within the service to, for such payments to be made to a, an individual's private account or private account of staff members. Mm. So, and um, we'll see how it goes. They're also probing her in connection with the 37.1 billion alleged laundered, allegedly laundered funds during her tenure. That's from uh, Sadia's tenure. It had 7.1 billion funds allegedly laundered at that time. I think this ministry should, all the subsidy we are saying, the mm. power, they should use this kind of money because we don't know who vulnerable for Nigeria. So <laughs> we know I don't want to say now. this story. Let me just leave it. You can't, you can't know. Everybody's acting for him. I'm telling you. <laughs> so the Lagos State Special Offenses Court in Ikeja Monday sends back the immediate past governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, to the custody of the EFCC. Uh, Justice Raman Ushudi uh, made the remand order shortly after the anti-graft agency arraigned Emefele on 23 counts bordering on abuse of office, accepting gratifications, corrupt demand, receiving a property fraudulently obtained, and conferring corrupt advantage. Now, in the substance of the charges, the EFCC alleged that abused uh, his office while he was CBN governor through allegation allocations of 4.5 billion US dollars and 2.8 billion uh, in Naira. He was arraigned alongside Henry Isioma Omoile, and the AFCC has accused that one of accepting gifts from agents. Both defendants had pleaded not guilty to the charges. Now, um, Justice Osho, the order that Emefile should be remanded in AFCC custody, uh, Omoile be remanded at the Ikoi Correctional Center where he was already being held. And he made the remand orders while adjoining the uh, matter till Thursday, April 11, 2024, so that they can hear their bail applications. Now, with Monday's order, he is to return, that's Emefele now, to return to the EFCC custody uh, about four and a half months after he had left the custody before. He left in November 2023, uh, following his initial 151 days in both the custody of the EFCC and the Department of State Services. Uh, whatever they have moved the you know matter to april between april 25th and 26th and we'll be hearing more about that he's still insisting that he's not guilty so let's see what the case brings so yeah. nnpc <coughs> the nnpcl is facing a three billion dollar backlog and this is on petrol payment they said that this three billion dollar backlog is being on um the to the, the, the importation of petrol into Nigeria, the people that import haven't been paid. They said the backlog is taking 130 days <coughs> as opposed to 90 days, which it should have taken. The statement also said that the backlog, it might be a blowback from the government's effort to manage the economy and shore up the Naira against the dollar. Um, the spokesperson for the NNPCL, however, said that they are not aware of any backlog, that everything they've been doing has been within the time frame. The major importers of field, um, traders like Vitor, Mercuria, Governor, as well as the local players said that they, they refused to comment on the story because they said it wasn't, they, they are not allowed to. <coughs> However, some people that refused to comment, that people, some people commented without being named, mm -hmm. mentioned the fact that the backlog might be because we are also, we are sort of back into paying subsidy on the amount of money that we're set, um, buying fuel right now. Nigeria has been subs subsidizing fuel since forever. Even though the president has removed subsidy, it still falls around, like the petrol consumption has fallen by 30% since the removal of subsidy. Mm. But 
it's the cap of the, the cap place placed on the price right now might still um, be implying that there's a bit of subsidy that might end up being paid. But we're hoping that we don't have fuels few Q back based on the lack of payments. And if there is indeed a $3 billion, uh, $3 billion um, backlog, it should be cleared as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. NNPCL now runs as a private um, company. Entity, yeah. So. yeah, so let's move on now to the Daily Sun. Major headline, federal government beams such light on ministers. Others launches live tracker app for Nigerians to report ministers, government officials, and list its priority areas. Omobaya replaces Shaibu as a do deputy governor. We've taken that story. PDP, Reps Coalition demands Damagum's resignation, accuses him of plotting to hand over party to APC. Binance executive Gambarian arraigned on five counts, remanded in prison. Court remands Emefele in EFCC custody for alleged abuse of office, 4.5 billion US dollars and 2.8 billion Naira fraud. Trial begins April 11th. CBN approves daily sale of 10,000 to 1,588 BDC operators. Bars ban customers from using Forex as collateral for Nigeria Naira loans. Salah, new moon not cited. Fasting continues today, NSCIA. What stories do we have in the sun? Okay, so this one is um, encouraging. The EFCC arraigned um, at the Federal High Court in, in Abuja yesterday. They arraigned the Binance executive, one Tigram Gambarian, in, and he, um, the court ordered that he be held in the, at the Koje prisons. Now, details of this uh, arraignment was that um, three people, three executives of Binance were actually arraigned and held at the prison but we define one of them mm. then the other exactly. two <laughs> the other two pleaded <coughs> not guilty um but in the affidavit they had exposed that they were within the country at the time of uh, service so they had sworn to an affidavit that they've been in nigeria since february to meet with the nigerian government so the court wondered that's justice witty wondered why they were evading uh, uh, to accept service of the charges on behalf of binance and that she felt that was unlawful, and so she subsequently ordered that they be remanded, mm. remanded at the Koje prisons. Their lawyer then argued that as foreigners, he pleaded with the court actually, he said, but they are foreign nationals, and he's urging the court to order that they be remanded at the FCC, detained at the FCC office instead of at the Koje, the Koje prison. prison. The prosecuting lawyer now have African rights for him. He says that the Koje prison remains an appropriate place because it it's part of our correctional um, center. And he argued that many Nigerians are being Abroad. remanded in United States prison mm. on account of criminal charges mm -hmm. and are not treated as foreign national with preferences. Mm. And so, 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 <laughs> so we shall have a criminal. <laughs> criminal. <laughs> yes, so Whether you are foreign or you are, are local. proceeding mm. with this. Um, the amount in question is about... 35.4 million dollars mm. wow. that you know they are supposed to have laundered um, within the um, you know within that period through their company it's a serious matter we'll be, um, it is. Do we have from. another story in the sun i was going to uh, no go on no 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 i don't have a story, I, can you take your okay, story. I was going to take because i took it in both papers and um, the crisis with the pdp you know 60 out of the 113 uh, lawmakers. lawmakers have threatened to resign. Mm -hmm. They say um, the what's his name, Damagun, the acting chairman, should mm -hmm. resign mm -hmm. so that because they're supposed to have a national chairman from the, the, south. Um, the south or north central, mm -hmm. so he should please resign or they will. They will please because I watched an interview where he said he will either. They will either uh, take it to court, they will take it to court first, but they are, that this uh, guy is in bed with APC. That's a weekend. Uh, uh, no, the term, is that even the chairman is in Damagun. bed, the national acting yes. chairman is in bed mm -hmm. with APC. Yes. And he's not talking, that people are doing anti-party things, uh, yes. and he mentioned Wiki, that they are doing anti-party things, he mentioned all the governors that were walking up and down, mm. doing anti-party activities. The anti-party party activities in river states. So, if the guy doesn't resign, they will first take it to court, or then they will now leave the party. Sixty of them. Mm. Okay. Yes. The PDP will not learn. Uh, PDP will not learn. They, they, they should. talked about how their party is just um, 
Literally. With Justin. It's going down. It, it's, 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 a, it's about the ideology. Mm. It's about there's no ideology. There's no governance. There's no... There's no synergy. There's no synergy. There's no synergy. There's no one Everybody is selfishly anymore. trying to achieve their own personal goals. Yeah. In a political yeah. party. Let's take our final paper for today, the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, major headline, 60 PDP reps threatened to quit party, want Damago out, YK just took that, over alleged doctrine of rivers, 10 other states caretaker committees members list. We will study allegations according to the PDP. Why Nigerian airlines find it tough to compete with foreign carriers? Keyamo, uh, CBN, we've taken that story. Lagos, Calabar, Coastal Highway article, mixed up facts, presidency. 16 die of Lassa fever in Benue, 300 level student dies in Kogi, painful. Lagos court orders remand a Mayfile in EFCC custody as trial begins April 11th. Ibadan Kingmakers to meet Thursday for Ola Kulein's nomination. Edo Assembly impeaches Shaibu, Omobayo Godwin sworn in as new deputy governor. Ondo 2024 again, Ayeda Tiwa Akinterinwa campaigners bicker over billboards destruction. Do we have any stories in? The yeah, movie? Kiyamu. So I, I took the story from Festus Kiyamu, but I'm highlighting his story concerning Emirates, that the United um, <laughs> Arab Emirates, Emirates airline operated in Dubai is going to be resuming in Nigeria very soon. They said mm. the CBN has, that he has a letter on his phone from the Emirates, um, from Emirates that they were going to be resuming flights in Nigeria. The reason this, this has stopped since 2020 because they had issues repatriating their phone. Mm -hmm. CBN has paid $160 million to them, which is their money that was trapped in Nigeria for a very long time. But now that the entire money has been paid, they had hinted at this last year. Everybody was already celebrating. It was all over the social media. And then nothing happened. Mm. But now he said that it was because they were going through all the processes and that very soon, in like they, they are foreseeing around June, that Emirates would make an official announcement that they would start flying back to Nigeria in June. We, we have moved. Have they gotten some of their we money? We have moved to Qatar. I'm sure they've gotten our some of their money. Our miles are piling in Qatar. We're mm -hmm. not going to scatter our miles. <laughs> because I have the last half of story. So okay, Venice State go. recorded increase in the mortality rate of Lassa fever cases. About 16 people lost their lives in the state. Um, but Kogi has a, just one case of death mm -hmm. of a 300 level student who was rushed into the Federal Medical Center um, uh, in Kogi and with, with fever, a rare case of um, what they call a viral infection, but they suspect it to be Lassa fever as well. Oh, wow. So they had um, other bodies responding to it with other details of how it's affecting the IDPs and all of that. Well, those are the cases. So I saw a picture where they said they're on, on uh, identified illness is killing people. Mm. And you know, I don't know whether it's sensitizing like that or sensationalizing like that. Mm. They should just call it what it is. Yeah. Thank you.